Hey guys, Jim here from Carolina Outdoors. Uh, some of you may know me from Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV, but what a lot of you probably don't know is we have other things going on here that with that I'm also involved in. And one thing is we have a quail farm, uh, Quail Hollow Bird Farm here in Pleasant Grove, North Carolina. And I wanted to show you a little bit about the other side of what we also do uh, in our video production and on our TV show and in our farming and other, just other adventures and other things we have going on. Uh, what I'm getting ready to do today is I've come out to one of our quail pens here. You can see it in the background. Uh, this pen here has, a, has another pen attached to it, which is right there, okay? And that's what I call their grow out pen. And the birds that come out of the brooder house will go in here first. And then from there what happens is that when they get a little bit older, they'll go in this pen that you see right here behind me. Now this pen here is about 25 feet wide and it's about 70 feet long. And it's a pretty good flight pen and this is the last stage that the birds are going to go into before uh, people come and buy the birds for whatever reason they want them for. We sell birds as many as two birds, uh, three birds, you know, to people who just want them for pets. We sell quail for um, guys who want them to train their dogs, as well as uh, quail in large numbers that we sell to hunt and preserve. So this is the last stage that they will be in before we either turn them out in the wild to be hunted or we train dogs with them. Now, I've had to go around this pen and check it out. It hasn't been used in about six months. And, you know, one thing you want to make sure with a pen like this is that this fencing, this is one inch chicken wire that we have on here. And it's really good to use. A lot of guys like to use the nylon wire, but the reason I don't like nylon is if you have a problem with squirrels and a lot of predators and things like that, what's going to end up happening is they're going to chew through that and they're going to get in here and they're going to get into the food. And the next thing they're going to do is they're going to tear holes you know into things where the birds are going to get out so i like using this mesh i've lost very few birds from them coming up against it and hit it hitting it usually when they're flying around they see it coming they'll slow down just bounce off from it but anyhow um we've got i've got a few birds in the truck here and we've pulled them off out of the brooder houses and we're getting ready to put them in the pen now in the next couple days it's going to get cold and I've made some preparations here because I've got to get them acclimated to the weather change and to being outside so let's go ahead inside here and I'll show you a little bit about what we've done like I was saying you want to go around in your pen and you want to make sure all your holes inside your pen are blocked up and nothing can get into them uh, we've got the mesh up here as well the one inch mesh. The uh, the ceiling height on this pen is about 12 foot high. But um, before you put birds in, go around the perimeter and make sure there's no holes. Uh, one thing you'll have trouble with in the nighttime is owls. They will get in here and uh, they'll raise cane uh, with your birds or predator and that's what they do so uh, you know you want to make sure you get all the small holes that you might you might get in the fence uh, get them patched up before you put your birds in there now down here on the bottom if you look what we have is all around we have some metal uh, along the bottom right here and that's just to keep dogs and cats and stuff from looking in here it also keeps the birds from getting overactive and uh, nervous when something does walk by the pen. Uh, right here we got an automatic feeder. Uh, it'll hold uh, about 65, 70 pounds of grain. And on the bottom right here, what you see right here is a, um, it's actually a deer feeder. And we have this on a timer. Let me get it here away from this so it won't be so backlit. We actually have a timer on there that will feed the birds twice a day. That again depends on how many birds you're going to have in here now. We house about 800 quail in this one pen. We have another pen up on top of the hill and I don't know if you can see it from the camp, you know, from where we are, but if you look right up there there's another pen on the hill up there. That pen will hold probably about 1200 quail at a time.
it's a lot bigger pen. So um, we do raise quail, we do raise chuckers, we raise uh, feral quail, and we raise Tibetan quail here on the farm. We'll show you them a little bit later on in another video. But let me go ahead and get these quail out, and uh, we'll release them in here, and we'll see how they like it. A lot of preserves, a lot of guys that raise quail, they don't like raising them on the ground. And I'm going to tell you I do, and I'm going to tell you why I like doing it, guys. The reason I like doing it is because it acclimates the bird to the weather conditions and it acclimates them to being outside. Uh, they don't get so cold on the ground. We lose very few birds, and what I mean by very few birds, in a month's time we might lose one bird from them being on the ground. Um, I don't like raising them above ground, and I just think they do better out in the wild if you raise them you know, on the ground they'll get used to things like you can see in this pen we have things which they would see out in the wild right here's a place where they can cubby up and i got hay on top which shields them from the cold uh, and there's grasses in here around their feeder you can see there's grasses because that won't last very long they'll they'll eat that up pretty quick but um you know i try to keep my pens as close is to the outside as I can so the, that the birds are going to know they're going to feel you know when you release them that there hasn't been much of a change so let me get these quail out of the pen and I'll go ahead and put them in here I'm going to put in here today probably about six seven hundred quail so I better get started but I want to do this little video to show you the other aspect of what 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 my life is and what we do and, and part of it is that we do have a farm we have a bird farm. We raise quail and uh, and uh, uh, feral quail and things like that, uh, chicken, goat, and so that's my other part of my life that you don't see a lot of. So let me go ahead and get these quail out. We'll put them in here and we'll show you these birds. All right, these quail here are young Georgia giant Bob White quail. Okay, that's what they are. And he's a little timid right now because this is something new to him. He just came out of the pen and the brooder pen so he's not quite sure what to make about make over this but uh this little this little dude right here uh he's probably about 14 weeks old you can see he's got most of his feathers they are flying around so it's time that they uh get acclimated to the outside so we're gonna return put some of these behind me we're gonna put some of these birds out here and see what they think now he's gonna get along just fine down there on the ground it's gonna take him a while to figure out what's going on uh, we've got food right here for them, uh, which is the food that um, they were on in the brooder pen, in the brooder house. I don't want to switch them over to we use a, green, uh, a game bird feed, which is a mixture of mullet and uh, sunflower seeds, cracked corn, things like that. And they really like it. But their digestive system is used to being on that type of food, so I don't want to put them on that right off. I want them to change over gradually. So we're going to let these other quail go and then we'll come back and show what they look like here in the pen. Show you how they're getting around and um, we'll let them get settled down for the evening and hopefully they'll get acclimated to, uh, to what's going on here in the pen. We've got all the little boogers set for the night and um, I put a light on over here, 250 watt ball because some of these quail it's going to be kind of a shock to them on their system and I don't know if you can see that let me back up a little bit there's a 250 watt bulb there and because this is the first night these quail have been outside what that's going to do is going to give them a little bit of a heat source because they're not used to being outside like they are and it's going to put a shock on their system and we want to minimize that as much as we possibly can. So, you know, make sure you've got water for them. Make sure you've got food source. You've got cover for them. Uh, give them warm bedding. And give them a, a heat source, which is the light. And they'll do pretty well. Well, it's getting late, and I want to go up here on the hill to the other pen where we keep our Tibetan and feral quail and show you some of them before the sun goes down. And that way you can see what they like, you know, what they're like, and you can take a look at the other pen we have up there. So let me go ahead there and uh, get on the golf cart and head on up the hill. All right, here we are at our pen up here on top of the hill. We And uh, what we have in this pen is feral quail, 
Um, they're kind of cousins of the Tibetan quail. This kind of bird here is more of a um, more of an eating bird than anything. But let me go in the pen here. And that way you can get a little bit closer look at what they're like. And uh, these, come on, get back in there. These birds here are more of a pet oriented bird. Um, a lot of guys will get them for training dogs, but they're uh, a lot bigger bird than just a standard bob white quail, and they grow faster. They're a lot more disease tolerant, and they don't stress out very, uh, very much at all. Uh, them and the Tibetan quail just make a, uh, just generally a better quail because they're not susceptible to a lot of things that bob white quail are. Now, if you can see these little boogers down here, they're a whole bit different color and they're quite friendly. It don't take much just to reach down and and grab one and pick him up. But uh, that's what one looks like. Okay, well, off he goes. Let me get another one here for the camera. And uh, there we go. <laughs> oh, hold still. Come on, Al. I guess they're not going to let me hold them today. Usually they're a lot more friendlier than that, but... The Tibetan quail and the feral quail are a lot more friendlier bird. And like I was saying, we have a lot of guys that get these birds just for training their dogs. They're not a very... The feral quail are not a very flighty bird. The Tibetans really are. A uh, Tibetan quail is a lot like a chucker. Well, you let him go out of your hand, he'll fly... He'll fly out of shooting range, so... But... A lot of guys like these here, a lot of people get these uh, feral quail for pets, and um, they're a meat bird also. If you go to a restaurant and you order quail, chances are that you'll be getting Tibetan quail. That's what you'll be getting. Let me see if I can get another one here to show you. There's a little guy right there, okay. If I can hold him in my hand, my problem is I got such big hands, I get, a, I get worried that I'm going to hurt them. So, and, they're so delicate. Hold still, guy. There we go. All right. There we go. That there is a feral quail. Now, Tibetan quail is going to look just like that, except, you want to get down? Except that they're going to be uh, more brown looking. I'm going to try to hold him up, but he's not going to let me. They're a totally brown looking bird. Uh, they sound different. These birds here sound different than a bobwhite quail do. But, um, these are the Tibetan quail. I mean, these are the feral quail we have. We'll have we'll have a Tibetan quail in here also in probably about three weeks. We'll probably have about 800 birds between the Tibetan and the feral quail. So we house a lot of birds here at the farm, and we do uh, sell a lot of birds. So if you're looking for birds for training dogs, if you're looking for them for pets or anything like that, just give us a call or stop by the farm if you're local and uh, check them out and get you some. Well, thanks for tuning in and watching. Uh, just wanted to show you a little bit here of what else we do on the TV show and what else we do with our lives that a lot of you don't get to see. And um, this is just another part of uh, something that I do. We, we raise quail and we train hunting dogs. Uh, we have another uh, YouTube page that we have at... Uh, you know, we, we do most of the stuff on there, but I just wanted to show all of our followers and um, everybody what else goes on here at Quail Hollow Farm. So thanks for tuning in, thanks for watching, and throughout the season here, we'll be putting on a lot more dog training videos, and we'll be showing you a lot more quail and chuckers and things like that. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. Hey guys, Jim here from Carolina Outdoor Magazine TV. If you made it this far in our video, it's obvious that you like what you've been watching. So please, if you'd like to see other related videos, click on one of these links right here and go to another exciting video for you to watch. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel right here and please like and comment. And that way you'll always be sure to be able to get notified when other exciting videos and how-to videos are made available. Thanks for watching.